All right, so today I decided to start working on my wild thing and start working on slowly getting it to the point of running on nitro methane. So today is the first step of the process. The carb modification, um, I started off with that. Uh, I basically drilled it out and all that stuff to what I think it's going to need to be drilled out to. So basically the idle speed circuit, I drilled it out one size bigger and the high speed circuit, I went five sizes bigger. And now we're going to try it on methanol. See if she takes off. It's going to be the first time I've ever seen this saw run. I've never seen it run. The fuel lines all needed changed. They were all rotted off. Uh, so I'm assuming that, you know, we can get this thing to take off with just a set of fuel lines and some carb mods and everything. Uh, we might need to put another carburetor on it. We don't know. Uh, we're not going to know until we try to fire it. So, yeah, let's see how she goes. We're not even going to mess around with the gas, though. We're going to go straight to the methanol and see if we can get her to go. Alrighty, so here you go. Let's see if we can get her started. And I'll just cut you in a clip if we get her going. All right. So we got her to go and she actually is running pretty decent. So now it's time to take her to the wood. Uh, we're gonna throw a bar on it. It'll be the 3 8 LP chain. Um, wild thing bar. Yeah, I think I got wild thing bar sitting here, but uh, let's see how she runs on methanol. Uh, those of you who run these saws and are familiar with them on gas, you will be able to compare, but I'm not messing around with doing all that. So we're just going to go straight to the methanol and then you'll get to kind of see the process or the progress as time goes on. Now, the weather is getting cold on us. So once the weather gets cold or to a point or whatever, it's really difficult to try to play with these fuels. So we might have a break here in the build process of this saw. I mean, we still got to build an expansion chamber and everything for it. So you bear with me here. It's going to take a while to get this thing finished, but let's see how she does today on methanol. All right, I'm gonna add this to the Wild Thing video. My G366, we're gonna see if we get this thing to run on nitromethane, or we're gonna at least start the process. So today this is gonna be the first shot. We're gonna do a 10% nitromethane and basically see if we got enough out of the carb to do this and kind of get an idea of what further modifications we're going to have to do. So we're going to take a test hit here with nitromethane. And I actually made these two videos like a week apart and I'm just jamming them together. So what you get is what you get. <laughs> so let's give it a run with 10% nitromethane. We'll do, we'll finish this video after the wild thing. All right.
that's where we are so far. Uh, that's methanol. There's no gas involved. Uh, the carb, I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more tweaking to get it to tune perfectly, but it's close. Uh, the, I think I'm kind of at the limits of what I can adjust out of it. So I think she could take just a touch more fuel on the uh, carb mod, if you know what I mean. But in order to go to nitromethane, I'm going to have to modify it a lot more anyway. So you know what I mean. But there it is. That's the first stage in our process. The wild thing is running on methanol. Uh, we still got a lot of tweaks to do. We still got an expansion chamber, uh, nitromethane, all that stuff. But, you know, we're getting there. All right, there we go. She's running. She's actually running pretty decent. Um, the low speed circuit wants just a touch more fuel. But otherwise, uh, she seems to be tuning exactly the way it needs to tune. Um, so, yeah. I think we got a good viable source here. This chain is the C83. Uh, when it gets dull, I'll just start sharpening on it, but uh, I'm saving my square for special occasions and stuff. So we're testing with C83 or my sharpening most of the time. Let's see if she fires. All right, I'll be back. I gotta warm it up some. I'm gonna put the heat gun on it. So 10% nitromethane seems to be the limit of what I can flow. Uh, the carburetor is definitely going to need modified. That's, uh, I mean, with, with my jets cranked all the way, that was, you know, still a little on the lean side. It's, uh, it's uh, quite a bit of a difference, though. I really picked up some torque. I could tell. Uh, she's, she's producing as much torque as a lot of my normal ported saws, and this thing didn't have a whole lot of torque before. So that was a significant increase in torque. Now, as far as modifications go, we're definitely gonna have to modify the carburetor more to get her up to closer to 40%. Uh, considerable amount more flow. And I can tell you, it needs more RPM. I think we need a little more duration in the exhaust. Might need to do some work with the transfers to help with the flow uh because you know as rpm goes up it's it's harder to maintain that flow at high rpm so i think we're actually gonna have to get into this and do some port work uh the exhaust roof on this is i think is if i remember correctly it's sitting right around 98 and i wouldn't be surprised if we need like a 94 to 92 roof which i mean if you think about it nitromethane adds torque so whenever you raise your roof to get to the RPM, you lose torque. And the nitromethane brings the torque back because of the fuel. You know, you're bringing the torque back because, uh, 
I was bringing up the torque with the methanol and now I'm adding the nitromethane to add torque because I'm going to be raising the roof for more RPM and you can add an expansion chamber. I mean, I'm, I can't race with this saw with an expansion chamber, but expansion chambers, you know, they add torque. None of this stuff really adds to your overall RPM. It adds torque, to, which, which helps you maintain RPM in the cut. So you have to do your port work to operate at an RPM level. And then you're doing the other modifications to bring the torque in, you know, uh, like an expansion chamber. Let's say you build an expansion chamber on your saw and your saw cuts at like 9,000 RPM normally, but you want it to run at like 13. I mean, throwing that expansion chamber on there isn't like a switch. Like it's going to just suddenly make your saw run at 13,000 RPM. The saw has to be capable of actually running at 13,000 RPM. The expansion chamber will bring your torque up uh, to help it maintain 13,000. So, like, say you you got to be able to free rev. Like, well, say say you want a solid cut at 13 grand, you need to be able to free rev closer to like 15 or 16 grand, and then you need to get everything set up to where. Uh, when you throw your expansion chamber on and it's tuned for 13, you want your port work to be tuned or your saw to be set up to run at 13. And then when the expansion chamber and everything comes into play, you know, you're cutting at 13 grand. That's kind of how she works. You're adding torque. Then once you get to a certain point, then you start going bigger on your sprockets and uh, so forth. So, uh, I mean, we're, we're ultimately talking about horsepower and I'm going to do a video here soon talking about horsepower, getting into the math of it and you know showing some things uh i think some people will learn some, some one or two things from it a lot of folks i don't think understand uh dinos with horsepower and everything so we're going to kind of dive into it a little bit and i'll show you what i'm talking about but yeah the 366 it's totally capable of running 10 percent nitromethane so that's a good thing i'm going to dump this fuel out get this all purged and the wild thing I think we are going to have to port on it next. I was thinking we were going to go to nitromethane, but no, the saw itself is not capable of turning the RPM that I needed to turn. So I need to change that first. I needed to get it to you know 12 grand or so before I start throwing the fuels and expansion chamber at it. So you know we're going to try to get her running 12, 13,000 RPM with as much <laughs> torque as we can on. The methanol but we're not going to have much compression there so we'll be able to run the nitromethane and then you know we're just doing things to add torque we're getting it to spin the rpm we want it to spin and then we got to do the other stuff to bring the torque into it to help it maintain that so yeah that's what we're doing i uh, hope it made sense but hey just on a side note uh we used roughly five ounces of fuel just in that little bit you saw with the uh, nitromethane and as we go up on nitromethane mix our goal is 40 to, or is a 40 percent mix we'll be consuming more and more fuel so just something for you to think about that was roughly a quarter of a tank of fuel just in those few seconds what 60 seconds or so so uh maybe two minutes what would that be five minutes a tank right now you know maybe maybe a little more we're probably going to be down to two minutes, two, three minutes for a full tank of fuel by the time this is done. <laughs>